Hi everybody, my name is Noah C. I'm a freelance musician and drum tutor based here in Surrey. And in this video we're going to be looking at dynamics around the kit, but more specifically the molar technique. So the molar technique is a whipping wrist motion in conjunction with four stick placements that's going to enable us to play more controlled, more consistent dynamics at faster speeds. So to attain this particular wrist motion, we want to pretend that we've got a piece of string tied to it. So when we pull our string, it's going to lift our wrist. And once we're in this position up top here, we want to use our arm from our elbow down to help whip that wrist and get our fully accented note. So one more time. So we're lifting by the wrist as if we've got our string, strings being pulled. Uh, from our elbow down, we then use it to help whip that wrist into an accented stroke. And then the other hand. So a great way of practicing this is adding a little ghost note just before. So what's great about this, as we're pulling our wrist up, we can do a slight tap. So just like that, yeah? So it's as if we're just letting the stick bounce of its own accord. And then once up there, get back to that top position again, and then whip for the accent. So one more time, so we do a quick tap, up, and then a full down hit for that accent. So, and then on the other hand, obviously. So we're essentially going to be practicing double strokes, with the first stroke being a ghost note and the second note being an accented note, but with this molar technique. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned four sticking positions. So these sticking positions are essentially going to help us anticipate dynamic changes throughout a rudiment or a groove or a drum fill, uh, which might seem a little bit trivial at the uh, speed that we're practicing them at now. But when you start speeding these, these things up, every little millisecond is going to count. So the four strokes I'm talking about and the four positions, we've got a full stroke, a down stroke, a tap, and then an up stroke. So we'll start with the full stroke. So the full stroke, starting high and ending high. And then with the left hand. So these strokes are for accents that are then going to be followed by another accent. So it's essentially that we're striking for the accent by keeping our stick up high and then bringing it straight back up ready for that second accent. So the second stroke is a down stroke. So we're going to start high and end low. So you may have guessed these are going to be for accents that are then followed by ghost note with the same hand, like so. So the third note is a tap. So we're already down. We're already down on the pad for a quiet note. So a tap is start low, end low. So these are for ghost notes that are followed by another ghost note. And then the final position is an upstroke. So that's starting low and ending high. So you may have guessed that these are for ghost notes that are then going to be followed by an accent, like so. So these strokes are essentially that first note of the doubles that we've been practicing earlier, where we're bringing the piece of string up, but we're doing a little tap. So we're ready to go. We're starting low and then we're ending high. The first exercise that we're going to do to incorporate our molar wrist motion with our four stick positions is going to be an accented paradiddle. So we're going to take a basic paradiddle and we're going to accent the first note from each side. So the stick positions to take into consideration here are down, up, tap, tap, because we've got our accent followed by some ghost notes, and we've got our ghost note followed by an accent with the left hand. So that should look something like this. Let's try that on the kit. So now we're going to take that same exercise and we're going to move those accents around the kit, really focusing on those consistent accents and also those consistent ghost notes on the snare drum. And 
And now that same exercise sped up in context with the groove. So you can apply that same process to any rudiment you like, but let's try it with a double paradiddle. So a double paradiddle is right, left, right, left, right, right, and then mirrored on the other side is left, right, left, right, left, left. So what we're going to do here is we're going to accent the first two right hands and then the first two left hands of the other side. So bearing in mind it's a double paradiddle, the last four notes are going to have exactly the same sticking position, down, up, tap, tap. But the first two notes are going to be full stroke followed by another tap. So it should be something like this. Here's the same in sextuplets on the snare drum. Now we could move these accents around the toms just like we did with the paradiddle, but this rudiment sounds quite cool in a groove context. So we're going to move our right hand up to the hi-hat, keep our left hand on the snare and apply those same techniques. Now speed that up and add some kick drums and you've got yourself a pretty cool sextuplet groove with some varying dynamics. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you found these exercises useful in getting to grips with the molar technique. If you have any more questions or comments, leave them down below. And thanks again.